Let's open up choice question. This class is already written for us. Um, but I wanted to compare and contrast it to the fill-in choice or fill-in question that we wrote um, together. So the choice question extends question just like fill-in question. That's similar. Um, unlike fill-in question, it actually has an instance variable. Um, it has an array list of strings that represent all of the different possible choices for the answer for this question. Okay. So subclasses can define additional instance variables if they need to. It has its own constructor where it's initializing its uh, array list. That's good. Um, and it has a method that doesn't exist in question. It has a new method called add choice. It's not overriding it. It's declaring it for the first time. Um, and this is a method that um, adds different choices to the array list, um, keeps track of which one is correct, um, updates the answer string accordingly, all that stuff, which is great. It does, however, override the toString method. Because the superclass's toString method just prints out the question's text, but here we also want to provide a list of choices to choose from. Okay. Um, and so this is an example where we want to call the superclass's behavior first, which basically gets us the question text. And then we're going to concatenate more stuff onto this variable for each choice that the student can choose from. Okay. So here we call the superclass first, then we do some extra stuff. Kind of the opposite of what we did in fill in question. So let's add a little bit of code to actually um, use this class as well. And we'll see a couple of, of important things as a result of that. So let's go back to question demo. We already have all the code here for our fill-in question. Let's create a second question. So we'll say question Q2 equals new choice question. And we'll say, who founded Apple? And then we need to actually call that add choice method to add all the different choices that we want. So we'll say q2.add choice. And one choice is Bill Gates. But that's false. And q2.add choice. And we'll say Steve Jobs. And that's true. And then I'm going to very carefully <laughs> copy the code from up here that prints the question, prompts for an answer, all of that type of stuff. But I'm going to read through it and make sure that I change Q to Q2 and this Q to Q2 as well. And I don't need to redeclare response. I'm just going to reuse that variable. So now in this little demo main method, we are creating two questions. We're prompting the user to answer both of them. However, it doesn't compile. Um, the compiler error we get is that the add choice method is undeclared. And yet, it's right here. Like, it's definitely declared. And so what I want to do here is we just saw an example of dynamic method invocation where at runtime, the Java runtime determines which version of a method to call based on the type of the object, what class that object was created from. We need to make sure that we appreciate that can only happen at runtime. Only at runtime can we actually know if we have a variable. Only at runtime does that variable have a value meaning a reference to an actual object that we can query to determine what its class really is. At compile time, we don't have that. And so the Java compiler has to be more conservative because its job is to make sure that our code, no matter what, is going to run um, without errors. And so what the Java compiler does, and when we hit compile, this is all the Java compiler at work here, Every time a method is called on a variable, it says, well, I don't actually know for sure what the value of this variable is gonna be, but I do know that it's a question. And so I'm gonna check in the question class and make sure 
that the question class defines the method add choice. And when it looks in the question class, there is no add choice method, and so it doesn't compile. Up here, it's fine, right? So when we, we have qu question, we have Q, the variable Q here of type question, everywhere we use the variable Q, here we're implicitly calling to string, the to string method is defined. Here we're calling check answer. The question class definitely has a check answer method. That's okay. Um, so this is okay, but this part is not um, because add choice is not defined. So if we're gonna call the add choice method here, we really have to make sure the variable is of type choice question. And then that will actually compile now. So there's, there's a few different things here that we just need to keep straight in terms of understanding how the Java compiler and the Java runtime work in terms of inheritance. First, to go back and, and connect, just to kind of review all three quickly, to go back to what we did yesterday, this line of code here is the substitution principle, right? We've created a new fill-in question, but we're assigning it to a variable of type question. And that's okay because a fill-in question is a question. A fill-in question can do everything a question can do and more. The reverse would not be okay. It would not be okay to create a new question and try to assign it to a variable of type fill-in question because a question is not a fill-in question. The relationship doesn't go both ways. Okay, so we gotta be careful of that. So that's the substitution principle says we can take a reference to a subclass and assign it to a variable of a superclass type. That's one thing we gotta keep in mind. The second thing we gotta keep in mind is that dynamic method invocation. When we call a method, it's not the type of the variable that matters. So in here, we don't care about the type of this and the fact that it's a question. We care about the object referenced by this and what class it's from. And that's how the Java runtime determines which method to actually call. And I know it's a lot, but we got to keep that separate from what the Java compiler does in terms of checking the methods we call in the variables and make sure that whatever the type of the variable is actually declares that method. So all three of those are important and fulfill different roles. All right, let's step through this code so we can get a sense of how the choice question works. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint here on choice question. I'm gonna run the main method again. I get that question wrong, but that's okay. Now we're about to make a new choice question. And if I hit step into, I'm in the constructor for the choice question. And you'll notice it's highlighting the curly bracket. It's not highlighting any real code because that's, there's implicit code there. Um, remember, if we don't explicitly call a superclass constructor, Java does it for us. So the code we're about to execute is, is the implicit call to the superclass's default constructor. So if I hit step into, sure enough, we're in the superclass's default constructor. Okay. Doesn't do much of anything, but we'll keep going. Here we make our new array list. That's great. Now we're back in the, the other question, or I'm sorry, back in the uh, question demo class. We're about to call add choice. Here's that new method we wrote for add choice. I'm not gonna focus on that too much. Here we're about to call the two string method implicitly. Okay. Um, when I hit step into, this is dynamic method invocation. It's calling the overridden version of two string. We're gonna start by calling the superclass version of two string, which will return the text. So right now we have got that, and then we're gonna add in all the choices. So I'm gonna hit step, step, step. We've got two choices. We'll return the string. We'll prompt for the answer. Oh, huh. The question just says no and we have two answers to choose among. So that's not what we want. So something is off here. Okay. This, this happens a lot, actually. Um, 
somehow we never initialized this instance variable text. And this often happens when we're working on a subclass and we forget to explicitly call the superclass constructor. Because in this case, the default constructor for question doesn't do anything. So we never actually initialize the question. So we have to fix this in, in, in our choice question class. So go ahead and open up choice question and go to the constructor. And we need to explicitly call the superclass constructor and pass along the value for the question text. Or else we won't have any Thing displayed there when we prompt the student. So we just need to explicitly do the superclass. All right, let's run it again just to make sure. Who found it? Apple. C jobs. Yay, true. Things work as expected. But we had to do that extra that extra step. <laughs>